collections in Java. Right. So before we even discuss uh, what collections are and uh, what the different types of collections are and uh, what are the capabilities of collections, let's try and see why do we actually need collections at all at the first place and uh, what is the use of collections and what are the advantages of having collections. Okay. So here uh, I've taken an example where uh, I have a class of six students okay, and I've declared uh, all student names for these six students. So my student one name is A, student two name is B, student C name is three name is C and so on. So what I've done here is for six students, I've taken six different variables and assigned values to them. So this was pretty simple and uh, it was not a lot of problem because this was only a class of six students. But let's say for example, my class was having 100 students, then what would have happened? Will I simply write 100 different variables and assign 100 values to them for those 100 students? That would be pretty lousy code, right? It would, it would be hard to write the code. It would take a lot of time. It would be hard to maintain such kind of code, right? So let's see what problems we have with this kind of design. The first thing is it's difficult to maintain multiple items of the same type. So if you see all these six things are nothing but they belong to a same category of uh, items. That's nothing but student names, right? So there is some way I should be able to group this category of items. And it's very difficult for me to maintain multiple items of the same type as different variables. Right? The second problem I have with this kind of code is data manipulation issues. Right? So let's say even I declared 100 student variables like this. And uh, for instance, let's say that these are not student names, but student roll numbers. And uh, at some point, uh, Say for example, I need to rearrange these roll numbers again. They've got different roll number codes now. So would I again go and do this 100 times, write 100 lines of codes for simply reassigning the values of the student roll numbers? That would be a pretty tough and challenging job again, right? So I'll have data manipulation issues later down the road. And the third thing is I'm simply writing unnecessary code. So for something which I can complete in a few lines of code, I'm writing 100 lines of codes and in increasing the complexity as, as well as quality as well as maintenance of the code. So someone down the future, if someone sees my code like this, it, it would be pretty tough for him to understand what's going on with such so much code uh, in my file. Right? So these are the basic issues we have with writing such kind of code. So one solution to this would be like arrays, right? So we've already seen earlier that uh, you can group multiple items of similar kind in arrays. So I can simply give uh, have a string array called student name and I can give all these six values in that string array, right? But now let's see what advantages I have with collections over arrays. So we, we, we've, we've just discussed that collections are nothing but it starts multiple values of a similar kind in a single statement, right? And even arrays does the same thing. So what's the difference between arrays and collections? What advantages I have over arrays and collections? So it's actually not really correct to uh, compare arrays with uh, collections, but uh, I'll just try and give an overall comparison between uh, arrays and collections because uh, we've got different flavors of collection and uh, we cannot really uh, compare each of this with arrays because they've got different functionality. But uh, I'll just try to give an overall um, comparison on arrays and collections, what advantages and features we have in collections over arrays. So if you uh, remember, in arrays, we could have, we could only store items of a similar kind, right? So if I declare a string array, all I can put in that array is strings, right? If I try to put a number in a string array, it doesn't really work. So if I have a new, 
integer array i can only declare integers if i have a string array i can only declare strings and so on but when it comes to collections i can have different types of items in a collection i can declare a collection and i can store a string in the first position i can store a integer in the second position i can store an object in the third position and so on and so forth right so there is no limitation to the type of element i am storing in the collection so that's one of the difference now what's the second difference second difference is in arrays the length is fixed so if i declare an array of length 50 i can only use 50 elements right i can only add 50 elements to that array and not more than 50 and again if i declare an array of size 50 it's going to allocate memory for me for those 50 elements in advance so even though i don't use 50 i i only use 5 i declare an array of size 50 and i use only 5 it's simply going to allocate space for 50 elements for me which i have not even using right so that's waste of memory and also i won't be able to extend my array but when you come to collections there is no certain limit set for the number of elements you can add to a collection you can add any number of elements to the collection and you don't need to predefine the length of the number of elements you are going to store in that collection so here if you are using five elements in a collection the amount of space that is taken on the memory is nothing but five space for five elements and not for 50 elements so that's one of one other difference between collections and integers number three when it comes to arrays uh, you will have to do all kind of manipulations yourself right so if you want to uh, compare arrays or do anything sort the array or a lot of other activities uh, you'll have to do all by yourself but when it comes to collections you've got a number of different methods which you are already provided with and all you need to do is use those methods effectively to get the required functionality so there's not much of effort from your end you need to do so on a overall broad uh, concept uh, this is the difference between arrays and collections so for further we'll be uh, digging into all the different types of collections and uh, their uses and different methods which you can use which will give you a more clear picture on collections okay so this is the hierarchy of uh, the collections so we see here that uh, map is uh, doesn't uh, really come under the collection hierarchy but still it is part of collections overall okay so under collection uh, interface we have set and list and uh, we have different implementations for sets and lists so we have has set linked has set tree set and for links set link list we have link list vector array list right similarly for maps we have got different implementations as well so actually queues are also uh, part of collections but uh, i have not added uh, queues uh, in this tutorial so you would actually have queues as well here uh, along with set and list okay so as we've already seen we have the three basic flavors of collections lists sets and maps so lists are nothing but list of things so since uh, as we've seen in the earlier example we say we have a student class student object with uh, student name role number and uh, certain other attributes so we can store a list of student objects in a list collection type right similarly sets are nothing but unique things so sets are again nothing but lists of things but these are lists of unique things okay so basically if you are storing uh, uh, ids say for example you you need each id to be unique right and you don't want any repetition or duplicates there so for that kind of things you can go for sets where you don't want any duplicates to be added to the collection the third is maps things with a unique id so we've said that sets are nothing but unique things again and maps are also things with a unique id so what's the difference between maps and sets when you come to map 
it is actually a name value pair of implementation so if you say i have a student object so i can say that uh, i store the student roll number which is a unique key as a name right so i can say name of the uh, map is uh, one and the value is the student object for row number one similarly i can define different pairs of name value right so this is basically a name value pair kind of a implementation we have in maps and not it's just not a list of things so that's the difference between maps and uh, lists and sets in in in, in general right. okay so these are the basic flavors of collections we have and we have sub flavors as well right and uh, the sub flavors are ordered and sorted unsorted and unordered yep. so when i say ordered uh, i mean that you can it iterate over the collection in a specific order right so it can be the order in which you added the attributes or it might be some order right we will be discussing the about that in detail in the future slides and uh, when i say sorted i mean that the collection is sorted in a natural order so if you are actually adding strings to a sorted set it would store those elements in alphabetical order so if i add a first or if i add d first and c for c second and a first a third i'm sorry then it's going to store a first c second and d third but not in the order in which i store them right so that is sorted and uh, again you have unsorted and unordered all the implementations of lists are ordered so that means you can iterate over the elements in a list in a specific order and what this order is this order is nothing but the based on index so basically for all the list implementations you can access the element based on the index of the element so the index starts from zero and it keeps increasing as you increase the as you keep on adding elements so you can access a particular element based on the index of uh, that element in the list okay so the first implementation of list is an array list so this is nothing but a resizable array implementation of a list so when we discussed earlier that arrays you need to specify a size for that array but when it comes to lists an array list you don't need to specify a list size for that array list it, it, it can be indefinite and as we just discussed it's ordered collection and uh, this should be considered when there are more data retrieval than add and delete so this basically talks about between array list vector and linked list when should you go for what type of uh, implementation so basically all the three are nothing but list so what is the criteria you need to uh, employ when choosing the correct type of uh, list implementation you need so when there are a lot of uh, retrievals than addition or deletion you should go with an array list because uh, we know that array list is nothing but internally an implementation of arrays so ultimately when you add uh, elements to an uh, array it basically resizes the array and again tries to uh, join the two uh, separate arrays and does a lot of uh, stuff internally so that's that's not really the implementation you need to choose when you go for uh, when you have more number of additions and deletions especially when there is an addition or deletion in between the array right and if, if it's at the end of the array it doesn't really matter a lot right so this is the criteria you need to choose uh, array list for when there are more retrieval than add or delete and the often used methods are add get remove set size right so uh, it uh, they are really uh, they are talk about themselves so i don't really need to discuss more about those uh, methods right 
next vector so vector again is an ordered collection since uh, all the list implementations are ordered and uh, this needs to be considered when uh, thread safety is a concern so what does it mean uh, it means that vectors are synchronized so all the methods in a vector are synchronized so we will discuss the whole thing about synchronization and stuff in when we discuss threads uh, in the later part of the session so but for now you you can just uh, uh, keep in mind that uh, when when you work with uh, the multi threaded environment uh, you you need to go with uh, vectors to uh, provide thread safety right? and again the uh, methods which are generally used are same as uh, what we have in array list okay and linked list is again an ordered uh, collection and this has basically faster insertion and deletion uh, when compared to uh, the lists right so when when you have a lot of insertion or deletion to be done to a list you need to use linked list and when you uh, have a lot of retrieval you need to use array list and when you have multi threaded environment you need to use vectors so this is about the different implementations of lists we have out there next set so we see we've seen that sets are uh, nothing but lists of unique items right so it's good and uh, so in sets you don't uh, all the set implementations are not really ordered so let's have a look at the different implementations we have the first is hash set so hash set is not ordered not sorted right and uh, it should be used only if the requirement is uniqueness so the only requirement if you have is that all the elements in this particular group should be unique you can go for sets and you no have you don't have any other complex requirements simply go for sets and uh, the often methods used are add uh, ad adding an element to the set contains uh, this tells whether the particular element you are searching for contains uh, is uh, is does belong to that particular set or not right remove and size okay next is hash set so hash set is not sorted but it is ordered and uh, what is the uh, order criteria we have here the criteria is nothing but the order in which the elements were added so when you try to iterate over the hash set linked hash set uh, the elements are retrieved in the order in which you added them right so that's the order we have in linked hash set this is actually a subset of hash set subclass of hash set right and uh, this should be used when the order of uh, elements is important to you so if you say i've added element a first and then i've added element b and uh, while retrieving the set of elements i still want the same order uh, to be to persist then you should uh, use linked hash set right so one thing about ordered and uh, sorted is uh, implementation could be uh, sorted i'm sorry it could be ordered but yet it could be unsorted so this is the case which i just told you this is ordered but it is still not sorted but if an implementation is sorted you can guarantee that it is ordered so it can either be ordered and not sorted or it can be not ordered and not sorted or it can be sorted and ordered but it can never be sorted and unordered so that means if an implementation is sorted for sure there's a guarantee that it is ordered as well right and the order would be a natural order there right okay the next implementation is tree set so here is that uh, just example which, which which we just discussed it is both sorted and ordered and uh, what is the order so basically it's sorted based on the natural order <coughs> so when i say no natural order uh, it it means that if if you are adding strings it is sorted based on alphabetical order right but if you are adding objects to this uh, tree set how is it ordered so basically then you implement a comparator where you uh, override the compare to method and uh, in the compare to method you basically try to compare two 
elements based on some criteria so let's say for example I have, I have a student object in which I have a student ID and student name as attributes and in the compare to method I will compare the student roll number so I'll say that if student roll number of this object is greater than student roll number of this object object 1 is greater than object 2 right so that's the kind of uh, comparison mechanism I use so it's when you when you are using objects it's totally up to you uh, to define uh, the uh, comparator and uh, what's the order you want on what's the criteria for ordering you need right okay. and uh, again the these are often used methods in a tree set right okay now coming to maps uh, as i've discussed earlier maps is nothing but a name value pair kind of an implementation so uh, you give a name and then you give uh, a value for that uh, name corresponding value for that name so these are different implementations we have for a map uh, hash map is the first uh, it's not sorted and not ordered right and uh, we can have one null key and a number of null values in a map. So we've uh, talked earlier that uh, map are again a list of unique IDs, right? So only the name from an in the name value part, only the name is unique and the value is it's not required to be unique, right? So still uh, all the elements are unique, you can even have null. So that means since there should be unique, you can have only one null value, right? So you can have one null key, but you can have a, num a number of null values because the value part is not really unique you can you can you can duplicate you can have duplicates so this is not thread safe so you cannot use this in a multi threaded environment where uh, you want to implement thread safety on hash maps yep. and uh, often used methods are get put contains key and key set uh, in a hash map so basically when you say get uh, you give you pass the key for that and uh, you get the value for uh, that particular key so say for example I've uh, stored student IDs and student objects as name value pairs so student ID would be say 1 and uh, the corresponding student object would be stored in the value for that uh, map hash map implementation right so when I say get of 1 uh, I'm going to get the value of the student object which is stored as a value for that student name 1 right next hash table hash table is not sorted and not ordered again but the difference between hash map and hash table is that uh, you can have uh, a null key in hash table I'm sorry in hash map but whereas in hash table you cannot have any null values be it null keys or values you cannot have any null items in a hash table and uh, hash table is thread safe so that means all the methods in a hash table are synchronized Okay. linked hash map is not sorted and it's ordered and tree, tree map is sorted and ordered and all the other features are same as uh, what we have discussed earlier okay so these are the basic uh, implementations we have uh, in collections 